Hey, check out this huge construction. It isn't a time machine. Neither is it a portal to another dimension, even though it looks like one. This extraordinary machine, called the Zhangmen Underground Neutrino Observatory, or Juno for short, is hidden from the prying eyes 2300 feet underground. It's designed to study one of the strangest and most mysterious particles in the universe, the neutrino. Often nicknamed ghost particles, neutrinos are incredibly hard to detect, but may hold key clues about the universe's biggest puzzles, including how matter formed and whether our current understanding of physics needs an upgrade. Neutrinos are subatomic particles produced in nuclear reactions, like those in the sun, exploding stars, and nuclear reactors on Earth. They're the second most abundant particles in the universe after photons, the particles of light. Now hold your hand in front of your face. Trillions of neutrinos are passing through it right now without leaving a trace. They almost never interact with anything, not your body, not even a wall of lead, eight light years thick wouldn't stop them. This makes them incredibly difficult to study. Neutrinos are also special because they don't behave like most particles. They come in three flavors – chocolate, strawberry, oops, I meant to say electron neutrino, muon neutrino, and tau neutrino, and can switch between these types as they travel. This behavior, called oscillation, is linked to their mass, and it's a mystery. No one knows exactly how much a neutrino weighs, or even which type is the heaviest. And that's where Juno comes in. It's designed to figure out the mass hierarchy of neutrinos, meaning the order of their masses. If scientists can manage to figure it out, it could help us solve some of physics' biggest puzzles. Juno is an enormous sphere filled with 20,000 tons of a special liquid called a scintillator. Scintillating, isn't it? Okay, I'll stop. This liquid grows faintly when particles interact with it. Surrounding the sphere are 43,000 supersensitive light detectors, which will pick up these tiny flashes of light. Why build it underground, you may ask? Well, cosmic rays and other background particles constantly collide with Earth, and they would overwhelm the sensitive detectors if Juno was built at the surface. By hiding it under hundreds of feet of rock, scientists can block most of this noise, allowing them to focus on neutrinos. Juno is also located almost 33 miles from two nuclear power plants. These plants produce tons of neutrinos, specifically antineutrinos, the antimatter counterparts of neutrinos, through the radioactive decay of uranium and plutonium in their reactors. By studying how these antineutrinos change as they travel to Juno, scientists hope to uncover the neutrino mass hierarchy. Now, here's what happens when an antineutrino interacts with Juno's detector. It collides with a proton in the liquid, creating a positron the antimatter version of an electron and a neutron. The positron immediately collides with an electron, releasing a burst of light. The neutron, meanwhile, takes about 200 microseconds to combine with an atomic nucleus, releasing another burst of rays. These two bursts of light, the first from the positron and the second from the neutron, are the key signal that a neutrino interaction has occurred. And that time gap between the two bursts help scientists distinguish genuine neutrino signals from other background events, like cosmic rays. But even with this elaborate setup, Juno will only detect about 40 to 60 neutrinos per day out of the billions passing through it every second. So, to gather enough data to make conclusions, the experiment will have to run for several years. The goal is to record 100,000 neutrino events. Now the thing is, our current understanding of the universe is based on the standard model of particle physics, and it has been incredibly successful in explaining how particles and forces interact. But the standard model has gaps. It doesn't explain dark matter, dark energy, or why the universe is made mostly of matter instead of antimatter. Neutrinos might hold the answers to some of these mysteries. For example, the way they interact and oscillate could hint at new physics beyond the standard model. Now, Juno is a truly global project involving about 700 scientists from 18 countries. The experiment was first proposed in 2008 and has faced many engineering and logistical challenges. But hopefully, it'll start working in 2025. After all, this $300 million investment in science and engineering could make groundbreaking discoveries.
But Juno isn't the only scientific facility built to explore neutrinos. Deep beneath the Antarctic ice, near the Amundsen-Scott South Pole Station, lies Ice Cube, an enormous neutrino observatory. Imagine a detector the size of nearly a quarter cubic mile, entirely made of ice and equipped to spot neutrinos. It's the first gigaton-scale neutrino detector ever built, an immense scientific instrument hidden between 4,700 and 8,000 feet under the Antarctic surface. The main detector consists of over 5,000 digital optical modules, sensitive light sensors, which are attached to 86 vertical strings frozen into the ice. These strings are arranged in a hexagonal grid, with each string carrying 60 digital optical modules. Together, they form an enormous three-dimensional array. When a neutron interacts with an atom in the ice, it can create a charged particle moving faster than the speed of light in the ice. This generates a faint blue glow called Cherenkov radiation. Scientists observe this light and can understand the energy, direction, and origin of the neutrino. One of Ice Cube's primary goals is to uncover the origins of cosmic rays, incredibly high-energy particles, mostly protons, that travel through space at near-light speeds. They can have energies millions of times higher than those produced by Earth's most powerful particle accelerators. Scientists believe they come from extreme cosmic environments, like supernova, black holes, or gamma-ray bursts. But so far, their exact sources remain a mystery. That's why they deflect by magnetic fields as they travel, making it impossible to trace their paths directly. Neutrinos, however, aren't deflected or absorbed, so they carry unaltered information about their sources. IceCube is designed to detect these neutrinos, giving us a way to see cosmic rays' origins. Since it became fully operational in 2010, IceCube has already made some groundbreaking discoveries. It detected the first high-energy astrophysical neutrinos, proving that these particles come from outside our galaxy. In 2018, IceCube pinpointed a high-energy neutrino source to a blazar, a galaxy with a supermassive black hole at its center shooting out jets of particles. So, we've seen an observatory hidden underground, another one frozen into ice. How about a telescope built underwater? Deploying a telescope in space is already a big deal, but putting two of them deep underwater is a whole different challenge. Now picture this. Scientists are on a ship in the Mediterranean Sea, spending weeks at sea braving rough waters and battling seasickness. They're not trying to study stars. They're after neutrinos, too. The plan is to set up a giant underwater telescope in the Mediterranean, using light detectors that will be able to spot these minuscule particles. The Cubic Kilometer Neutrino Telescope is a huge project designed to catch them. It's going to cover a cubic kilometer of the Mediterranean with underwater detectors, basically turning part of the sea into one giant telescope. These telescopes don't look at stars. Instead of using lenses or mirrors, the telescope uses glass spheres that hang from long cables under the water. Think of it like a necklace of glowing pearls. These spheres are packed with sensitive devices that can detect the faint light produced when a neutrino crashes into water. These detectors are lowered into the sea one strand at a time. Each strand can be 2,300 feet long, and eventually there will be hundreds of these cables with all the sensors hanging on them. The goal is to make one of the biggest and most complex neutrino detectors in the world. The telescope has two parts one off the coast of Sicily, and the other off the south of France. The Sicilian telescope is focused on detecting high-energy neutrinos from deep space. Those are the really extreme particles created by things like black holes or exploding stars. The French telescope is going after atmospheric neutrinos. These neutrinos are a little different. They come from Earth's atmosphere and can help scientists study how neutrinos change forms as they travel. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.